welcome to Drinks Coach. Fine sack or lowercase. Drinks Coach UK or lowercase. You know the drill by now. Please click on the bell in the subscribe and the down bit thing so that you get notifications about all these fabulous shows. Yeah, um, if you missed the last one, uh, this is the last one of three. Um, a trilogy, not a saga. Um, this is Grease 3, um, which sounds a lot less shit than it sounds. Um, Grease 2 wasn't very good, was it? Okay, but I love Grease. I love that film. I was only seven. It's fine. Um, so what happened was... Uh, we went through a load of white wines from Greece a couple of few, well, about two, three weeks ago. Then um, uh, the last show we did was Red Wines of Greece, uh, lovely representative and transcendentally delicious examples of um, Greece's f f most famous regions. But my friend Arena just brought too many wines. It just didn't seem fair to A, not finish the story, but B, not give the wines the credit where credit's due. And there's so much still to talk about with these just four wines. Let's just bob on, shall we? OK, for the last friggin' time, my wife's map. Two of these wines are from Danny. See that? Cyprus. Top half Turkish, bottom half Greek. Massive flipping mountain in the middle called Mount Trudos. And the area of Dio Trudos and Dio Paphos just south of there is where it's happening, baby. That's where all the good kit comes from. Um, I've got a couple of friends on holiday in Cyprus at the moment. Shout out to you, Matt and Joe. I hope you're having a good time drinking brandy sours. That was my recommendation, everyone. OK, why? Well, um, there are kind of two truisms when you go on holiday to Cyprus. There are some incredible hotels. Incredible places. Uh, amazing. Um, and uh, basically the wines either come from Greece or they taste like they came out of a toilet. Um, but there are now exceptions. I think it's probably about two dozen Cypriot wines I've now tasted where I thought, oh, blimey, somebody's really taking this seriously now. If you go and buy red wine and you ask where it's made from, they go, oh, this is made from a great variety called Mavro. Mavro, I think Mav Mavro either means tractor axle grease or it just means random red grape variety. Um, it's not all that. There is a white grape variety, though, however, which makes terrific wine. And actually, it was used a very long time ago. I mean, Jesus old. Um, and the the Knights Templar brought this wine back. This is the wine that ba was the first ever Catholic sacramental wine. And we call it Commanderia of St. John. And uh, Commanderia of St. John ha ha goes from the tourist type that you buy in the, in the, in the airplane terminal in Limassol on the way out which tastes a bit but it's all right it's drinkable but it's just a sweet industrial wine or you can go right up to um uh the Anama project which is this guy who who's a fantastic viticulturist making incredible wines where he's picking these grapes from this particular variety which I'll come on to in a minute and maybe some red too mixing it together by drying them out on tables first and making this unbelievably delicious sweet wine Commandery of St John be made the same way for thousands of years. Well, the variety that I think, the white variety, the only one that I take seriously, is called Zinisteri. Spelled either XY or XI, but I should just show it to the camera. Zinisteri. Now, Zinisteri is capable of making both delicious crisp white wines and also a little bit of sweet as well. Um, there is one, a wonderful great variety called Maratheftico, which is made in tiny quantities in Paphos uh, and is a variety which is virtually extinct. This is Maratheftico. So this is the only red variety that if you're in Cyprus, you go, oh, I'd fancy drinking some Cyprus wine today. Stick to Maratheftico and Zenistry, or you're a dick. OK, so let's try this one. It's called Alina. It's from uh, Vuni Panaia Vineyard. Now, Panaia actually is a vineyard area in Paphos. So I don't think it's the name of the family. Um, but they call this Alina Zenistry 2018. Let's see what it has to say for itself. Oh, I should have checked the price of these before I started. Um, I'm going to guess it's just under 20 or something. Um, nice colour. Yeah, I mean, that looks grown up. Looks like Sancerre or something. Well, well, I never. That actually smells quite nice. It smells like Chablis. Um, gosh. It's been clearly aged on its leaves. When the wine in the tank, in the stainless steel tank, when the, the dead yeast cells, they drop to the bottom and you rack them off. So just the very fine, wispy, deposits from the yeast cells are left behind. They have this toasty, smoky, almost as if the wine's been aged in oak, kind of nuttiness to the wine. It also provides a lot of mouthfeel and creamy structure. So let's expect that to be there too. Mm. 
It's there, all right. Well, I never. Well done, Carvis Biliardis Arena. That is a Cypriot white wine that anyone can be proud of. That's very fine indeed. Not sure if it goes to the oysters. We'll find out soon. Um, got a few left. Okay, so. Zinistry, Cyprus. Joe, Matt, Yarnall, if you're out there and you didn't buy this, more for you. Mm. Just stick to the brandy sours. That's what people do in Cyprus. I was in the Royal Air Force and we used to make brandy sours in bin liner falls and watch the planes taking off at sundown and drink it with uh, silver tankards. Yeah, that taxpayers' money. Yeah. Okay, so, mouth have to go. Let's try this. I'm going to give it some air. Watch. Big glass. This is my Solcum Gin Chalice. You'll be familiar with it now. But I do know that Marath Africa needs a bit of air. Lovely colour. Gorgeous colour, actually. Um, not deep, not pale. That nice, nice mid-weight kind of like Cabernet Franc from the Loire or um, Petit Chateau Bordeaux colour. Well, the nose, if I'm fair, is a little bit mute. Maybe I gave it a too big a glass. Let's try a different glass. Let's see if it makes a difference. Let's try another tasting glass. Oh, it does. It does. Um, maybe a too big a glass isn't ideal for this. Mm -hmm. Plums. Baked plums. Dried plums. Lovely tight tannin. It tastes like it would just go with loads of things. It reminds me of very versatile Italian reds, like Val Policella Ripasso or um, Montepulciano d'Abruzzo, which are really firm, juicy... Beautifully structured wines with not too much complexity. Don't bark orders at you. They don't, they don't get in the way of the food. But it would be absolutely delicious with anything. Little lamb chops on the barbecue. Um, crispy pork. Um, those uh, uh, brochettes they have in Greece. That sort of thing. That just hasn't come to me the name of it. Anyway, but um, yeah, absolutely delicious. So there we are. Um, this is actually a great variety, which I will look forward to drinking when I'm there next time. Marathetico. The other thing is Paphos and Trudos... Those vineyards are very, very high. They're some of the highest vineyards in the world. If you take out um, Argentina and Syria from the equation, they're probably the tallest vineyards in the world. This vineyard, for example, is planted at 1,100 metres. 1,100 metres is, what's that? 3,500 feet. It's taller than any island, any mountain in Britain, with the exception of Ben Nevis. Um, it's a little kind of little goaty type fellow there, mountain goat. Love it. Yeah, terrific wines. Okay, so there you go. I stand corrected. It does. It is true that you can get some decent Cypriot wine in this country. Um, and it's lovely to see things have changed since when I was in the Royal Air Force in 1989, where everything just tasted like crap. Okay. Now, this is a treat. You don't see this very often. But the Greeks do like a dessert wine. And there are a lot of dessert wines from Greece. There's an island of Samos, where, sorry, up here, which is one of, uh, one of the oldest wine-growing islands in Greece, where they grow a lot of muscat. Come back to that in a moment. Um, also, a lot of wines um, made from acetico are picked le a late harvest to make the, to make some really nice, almost sauterne-like wines. Um, but we've got two wines here. Uh, one is from Pima Yerovasiliu, uh, who is one of the absolute godfathers of modern winemaking in Greece. It's seen the modern winemaking movement in Greece sort of started, let's call it 1981, 1980, 84, somewhere around that. Um, the great Butari family, the kind of biggest, and, and for many, many long, for, for a long time, the reign supreme best winemaking family in in Greece for nearly a hundred years, um, started buying up land in other areas and um, uh, making all sorts of uh, delicious wines. But that started the, the actual modernization and the and the expansion started in in the early eighties. Um, I think um, Yero Vasilio, Mr. Yero Vasilio, started in 1984, something like that. Anyway, he also championed, I'll just show you where he is, by the way. He's right in Thessaloniki, pretty much. You can actually see it across the, across the sound, but it's in the land just south of it. You can see the city. Um, and um, he grows all sorts of wonderful wines. He makes some Viognier, he makes this, he makes that. But there's a great variety which he's sort of protected, um, resurrected, propagated, is now being grown by many other people. And it is utterly delicious. Um, very fragrant, beautiful wine. And it's a great variety called Malaguzia. I just hope you can see that on the screen. Yeah, we can. There we go. Mala, Malaguzia. Okay, in blue. Um, 
Table Wine Malaguzia is one of the most delicious, most refreshing white wines in Europe, let alone Greece. Um, if you buy it from Carver Spiliadis right now, Apple Pay, it's on offer. There seems to be a bit of a sale on. There's some nice wines to buy. Current Malaguzia from Yara Vasilio is down from about 20 down to about 15 quid, if slightly less, um, which is a great price for that wine. Um, he makes a dessert wine out of it. He gets the oldest blocks. He picks them five, six weeks late. So in Germany, this would be called a Spätlaser or possibly even an Auslaser. So this is already a dessert wine, but certainly a sweet wine, if not very licorice. Um, then the wine is aged in old, inert French barriques um, on the dead yeast cells to give it a bit of mouthfeel and richness, but no oak flavour really to speak of. We're not mucking about. Okay, we're not mucking about. This is £37.50 and it's a half bottle. No, it's not. It's half litre, actually, let's be fair. So that's much better value than some, I suppose. Katima Yerevesilio. You should see that. There's another company called Hallgarten that brings some of their other wines in as well. But go to Carver Spiliardis. They've got some fabulous wines from this guy. Well, well, well. Quite pale in colour. Oh, mon Dieu. That smells... Like a compote of freshly chopped mango and white flat Bellini peaches. Not enough for you? It smells amazing. Maybe a bit of nectarine as well. Oh God, it's just mangoes. Ah, oh, mangoes and peaches. Oh God. <laughs> That's one of the nicest smelling dessert wines I've had in well over 12 months. If ever. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, remember Joe, it's £37.50. But Christmas is coming. Huh? Huh? Okay. Tick. All right. Wow. The aftertaste goes on for ages. I'll have to take it around to a friend's house. You can't just, I can't just drink this on my own. That'd be too selfish. Anyway, absolutely amazing wine. Beautiful packaging. All hail Katima Gerovasilio. All right. We're back to a guy called Mr. Paparousis and his two daughters who made a wine in la in yesterday's show. Um, made from right rightly called Sigalis, I think it was, Sigelis, which I now believe is the same grape variety known as Mavra Daphne. Now, Mavra Daphne is a red wine that's normally made sweet, like a cheap port. It's great for cooking with, actually. It comes from Patras here. This is also a Muscat de Rio Patras. Patras, that town there, at the top of the Peloponnese. And this guy makes all sorts of unusual wines from, from forgotten varieties. Um, compared to the last one, look, 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 you saw the look on my face. That's pretty badass wine. Um, this is about £25 for a half litre. Um, so it's not cheap by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, 50 quid a litre, that's like, what, £70 pounds a bottle in full size. No. Sorry. It's £35 pounds full size. Sorry. Anyway, this is made from Muscat à Petit Grain, the French variety of Muscat, the small, small grape variety muscat à petit grain means with little grapes and um muscat baume de venise muscat de rives uh moscatella valencia all the great muscats in the world these beautiful sweet wines are made from this particular um sort of like queen of the muscat family it's golden in color absolutely wonderful color uh, this has a, its own appalachian d'origin protégé of rio patras it's really interesting. This wine is what we call vin passerier. There's no noble rot making it sweet. They just leave the grapes out on benches and tables or on stones for, uh, I'm guessing, five weeks or something. Maybe, maybe not quite as long as that. But by drying out the grapes, you get a lot more concentration of sugar, which brings you a much, much richer wine at the end of the day. I can smell this is Van Passerie. A wine from France very famously smells like this, and that's Van de Pay, which means straw wine. And it's wine where you can not only taste the concentration of the dried grapes in the wine, but you can also taste the straw that the bunch of grapes were left on in the sun. Um, this is Greek Van de Pay, which now makes £24 for half a litre. Actually, pretty flipping good value for money. God, it smells delicious. <laughs> it's fantastic. It's like it's like vanilla custard and apricot jam. You know those apricot turnovers with cream inside, with a custard filling. It's just like that. Ooh. 
I'd love to drink that with poached peach, peaches and apricots. Bit of vanilla ice cream on the side. Thank you, Arena. Both fantastic. Very solid performance from our friends down in Cyprus. The white was an absolute surprise. Look below for the price. I can't. Look, I can't. But having tasted it, it might be more expensive than twenty pounds. But we shall see. That's Greek done. We might see it coming back, but uh, just for now, goodbye to Greece. F. Haristo, Arena, Irina, and um, we'll find you something else to try next time. I'm thinking mm, English Pinot Noir. How about that? Sounds better than it sounds, as it were. See you next time. Thank you.